Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the February session of That's Cray Cray. I'm Jeff Finn, CEO at Realnex, and joined, as always, by Tim Cray, Head of Development for Realnex. So today we've got a lot of ground to cover, as always, to uh, give you the latest and greatest on what's happening with the Realnex set of solutions. Lots of work done on the CRM. Um, great new tools for client reporting and lead management, some more efficient ways to print and uh, quickly get reports out, and some um, enhancements to the email marketing campaigns as well. We're also really excited today. Uh, we've made terrific advancements on our 3D rendering and uh, modeling capabilities, and we have Tim, uh, we have uh, Mike Lerig and Chris Sayre joining Tim today to also give you an update on those tools that uh, you should uh, be aware of and, and might want to take advantage of. So uh, we will get started with Tim and then flow into a uh, quick uh, peek at our 3D modeling support uh, for your project marketing and leasing activity. So Tim, let me let you take it over and we'll go from here. So let me change presenter and uh, be good to go. As always, if you have questions or comments, ideas you wanna put into the question box on the right of your screen, we'll tee them up towards the back end of the session and uh, make sure we get them covered. Hi everybody, can you hear me and see my screen, Jeff? You got it, perfect. Great, uh, welcome to the show. We've been working overtime this month. I've got a lot of really, uh, really cool stuff to show you. Some of it is live and some of it, and I'll let you know which parts are coming tomorrow. Uh, so by Monday, you'll have all this cool stuff I'm gonna show you. And I'm, and I'm pretty excited about what I've done. Uh, stuff that I never did in the desktop uh, that I think is gonna change your lives. So having said all that, uh, I'm gonna to try to start off with a case study to help push this through uh, so it makes a little more sense. I'm gonna start with Antonio who's looking for space to lease. He wants four to 5,000 square feet for five years, about seven to 8,000 a month. In the real next CRM, I right click on projects and pick open link in a new tab. And I do that so that I don't lose Antonio. This opens up projects, but it keeps Antonio's tab open. In the projects, I see my listings, buyer rep for lease for sale, tenant rep. I set a filter showing listings that are for lease just to see what Antonio, what I might have that fits his needs. As I cover the different listings, Antonio asked to see information on three of the spaces. Great, now I wanna add Antonio as a lead to those three spaces. This is what's new. I wanna track his interest and include him in my weekly report. I'll switch back to the contact tab where I still see Antonio. I right click his name and select add to project. This brings up the lead dialog where I can attach him to as many projects as I want just by typing in the first few letters of the project name. I can also fill in the fields that help understand what he's looking for, such as size, deal amount, notes, and save the record. Each record has a tab for projects. So in Antonio's case, I can go to that tab and I can see what deals he's interested in. Notice Realnex created three lead records from that one dialogue I just made. Huge time saver. That makes it easy for anyone on my team to see the spaces Antonio's interested in, as well as his status on each one. And as time goes by, each space changes. It's always here for anyone on my team to see, from their phones, from their computer, from their tablets, anywhere. It's also easy now with inline editing for anyone on my team to make changes to Antonio's progress. They can click the project tab from Antonio's record and change any field easily. For example, let's say Antonio calls back and says, I'm not interested in three flags. Okay, I'll change the result to loss, but notice I don't have to leave the screen. And I say, why? And he says, I don't like the location. So I can type that in or Here's a little hidden treasure for you. On the character fields, you can put in results. And, the, and if there are results that are pre-entered, you can click this button that's circled 
and it'll give you a list of objections in this case. So you can just check the objections and they automatically enter into the field. So you can watch for that you know, anywhere in the program. You see that little box, there are default answers. Antonio says, I'm interested in Balboa Square and Town Square. So I ask if he wants to tour them. And again, notice I'm changing them to tour right on the page. I don't have to go to a dialogue anymore. I, I still can, but this makes it much quicker. I'm gonna to go to the calendar now, but I'm gonna open the calendar in a new window. Not a new tab, a new window. That lets me still see Antonio's record while I look at the calendar. He asked me for a time and a date next Friday. I say, that's fine. So I wanna add an event to Antonio's record. I can right click Antonio's name and add an event right there. I don't have to go anywhere else. Notice that the record was automatically linked to Antonio for me. So that's a big plus. I can also um, include my colleagues on the calendar using the participants field. So it will show up on their calendar in case I want someone to join me or take over. And here's another hidden treasure for you. In Realnex CRM, we let you create your own event types. Tours are very important to my team. So I want them to stand out on our calendars. Notice in the dropdown, I have a lot of different event types instead of the three generic ones most CRMs have. I've created those to help differentiate the events, like meeting, phone call, and to-do. You notice I have a tour, and I've set the tour to red. That's nice because on the calendar, it will stick out. Uh, not only will it say tour, but it'll be bright red, so that everyone's eyes go straight to that. And it helps, uh, just at least helps me for the important things to stand out. And it's really simple to do. Just go to the settings menu, and system tables and event types. And in there, you can set uh, the duration, you can add new event types, and you can set the color. Okay, let's go back to Antonio. I just scheduled Antonio for a tour and hung up. Five minutes later, he calls back and he says uh, to one of my team members, I need to change the date on a tour I just scheduled with Tim, is he around? My team member says he's on a call, but I'd be happy to help you. She looks at his record and says, your tour of Balboa Square next Friday? He says, yeah. Can you change it to Thursday? My team member checks the calendar, says, no problem. You're all set. Anything else I could do for you? Antonio was taken care of immediately by someone other than me, even though he only made the appointment five minutes ago. It didn't require my team to run through the office asking who Antonio was or who he's working with. They didn't say, uh, sorry, Antonio, let me have someone call you back. I don't know. Uh, I don't know what's going on. Or um, have to go through the office saying, who is this guy? Uh, everybody, I changed his appointment, whoever's supposed to be meeting with him. All, all the stuff that happens daily because um, we, we aren't in touch with everything that's going on every five minutes because we can't have meetings. The program will let you automatically uh, log that stuff, anybody on your team, and besides that, they can go through and create reports for owners. So in this case, I generated a report for my owner showing leads, and you notice Antonio's record is right on it. It already put it in there because when the change was made on the record by my teammate, that automatically updated all the reports, and my owner sees that Antonio dropped on one project, but he in the other one, he wants to do a tour. Uh, it's huge, makes a big difference. Going back to the, to the uh, scenario, I showed you that you can go to a client's record, and in this case, it's Antonio. I can click the projects tab, and I can see all the projects that Antonio is interested in. But what if I wanna see all of the leads that are interested in a project? So it's just the opposite of what I'm doing here. Well, it's easy to do that too. There's Town Square where Antonio is um, a participant. He's interested. I'm going to go to the projects. I'll take a quick look at Town Square and notice that Antonio is a lead in that project, which is what I expected. Here's something new that you couldn't do before. I want to add multiple leads to a project, but I don't want to do it in nine different boxes. I want to do it in one dialogue. So I'll go to a new listing I got, Genesee Apartments. 
and I just came back from a trade show. And at the trade show, uh, three different people said they were interested in Genesee Apartments. So I want to add those three people as leads. From Genesee Apartments, I go to the Lead tab, and I click Add New. And now, instead of adding only one person, I can add all three at the same time just by typing in their names. They'll all become leads on this one project. And you can do something else that you couldn't do yesterday. You can type in a new contact. And if they, aren't, if they don't exist, you can click the button on the right and you can add them as a new contact, a new company, a new property right from this dialog. So if I click new contact now and put Susan's name in here, she becomes a contact in my database and she automatically becomes a lead on that project. Pretty cool. It would have taken a long time to do it uh, if you had to go through all the different dialogues that we used to make you go through. This is something that's coming tomorrow. I was hoping to finish it by today so I could show it to you on the call, but I couldn't finish it, so I'll show you what, what it's going to do. It's kind of a neat feature. When you're looking at a record, we have um, a couple of different views you can use. This is the tile view. We also have a list view, and we have a map view. Uh, all of these views can also be split into what we call a split screen. Split screen view shows you on the left side uh, the list or the tiles or the map, and on the right side shows you all the details about the particular um, contact or property. So here I'm looking at a property. And you can see on the left, I've got uh, all of the information of, of, or the list of things. And then on the right hand side, I have the details about the property. I want to see. Um, Let's say my owner calls and says, can you give me a rent roll of my property? I need it for something I'm doing. Uh, there, this new feature will help you with that. I'm gonna go to Grove Business Park and I'm gonna click on the Spaces tab. And that's basically my rent roll. Notice on this page, I can only see the first 10 records. That's the way it is today. And that's the way it is in production right now for all these tabs history, leads, events, all of them are limited to the first 10 records and you can go to the next page. In the release tomorrow, there's a drop down here at the bottom, it says 10 right now. I can click that drop down and I can change this to show uh, more records in the window. That's important for a couple of reasons. Number one, it's important because we've added the inline editing. So if I could show say 40 records or 100 records or 300 records, something like that, I could edit those records all on one page without having to skip pages. And in this case, I have 20 tenants, so I'm gonna show the first, or 21 tenants, so I'm showing the first 25. So that's one new thing you can do. You have to be careful though, because remember, every time you change records, I have to load this whole list of spaces. So if you set this to 300 spaces and you start trying to go to the next record, it's going to go really slow moving because it's got to load 300 spaces every single time you do that. So be judicious with this setting. It's great to do it when you're trying to make edits, or in this case, I'm going to do a quick print to give to my owner. So I want to see all the tenants. But if I want to, if I want to be conservative and be faster in the program, I should put that list back to 10 or something smaller because I don't want to wait while I change through the records waiting for the whole list to populate on every single property. So you don't have to do it, but I'm just letting you know, you can speed up your day if you don't keep that list gigantic. From here, uh, he says, I want to see the vacant, the available expir expiration date, square foot and rent and the tenant. So I can do that for him. I've got most of that already showing. I'm going to go to columns and um, change the columns. I want to add in available spaces that are available, and I want to add in um, spaces that are vacant. Those are two different things to me because sometimes I have tenants in spaces, but they're they're still available. So I want I mark both of those. Just add the columns by clicking the column button and saying available and vacant and okay. 
and then I hit the new button, which is print. And print gives me uh, three options, a quick print, a print to a PDF portrait, and landscape. Landscape works better for this because there's a lot of columns, because all that means is it turns the page sideways. So we can only print as many columns as fit on a page, and quick print is, it's not meant to replace export to Excel or uh, export to, uh, or run a report. Those can handle all kinds of columns and all kinds of formatting. There's no limit on those at all. In the quick print, you're just looking for a way to quickly print out five columns, eight columns, 10 columns, something like that, and send it to a person without having to go through the formatting in Excel or all the, re all the dialogues in the report box. So this can be very useful in certain situations when you wanna do a quick report, it's obviously very useful, uh, but it's not meant to replace the reports or the uh, or Excel. It's just a quick way to do a printout. Uh, we've also added this, and it'll be live tomorrow to the main tables. So on the main table, you'll see a new button called Output, and that's where you'll find reports. That's where you'll find the export to Excel and export to CSV, and the three new options, quick print, print to a PDF portrait, and print to a PDF landscape. The quick print doesn't support notes. If you need to get notes in a report, you need to use the report option, or you need to use Excel. The, the notes will, won't be in, the re, in, in this quick print, so if that's what you're looking for, it won't work. But in this case, I've got a, a list. Um, I can change the number of rows just by the thing at the bottom, and then I can just quickly print it. You can see how fast that happens. I can to a printer, I can send it to a PDF, um, but it's pretty quick. I want to end with something that's been in the program for a while, but I don't know how many people know about it. If you, uh, are, if you subscribe to Realnext as a suite user, or if you subscribe as a marketplace user, you automatically get a thousand emails a month for free that you can send out to campaigns. And if you need more, it's like $10 for another 5,000. So basically that lets you do email campaigns Every month, you get a, a thousand emails for free, and I'll show you what the campaigns are. But it's a way that you can market your properties. You can market those properties to your own contacts in the CRM. So you could create a group, or uh, you could create eight groups or whatever, and then you get a property that you want to market to them. You can just say, I want to market this. I want to pick this group from the CRM and send it. And they'll all get an email with the information in it. Uh, we have, I don't know how many templates I've made, but I, I keep making more and more templates and they don't cost anything. They're just, they're just uh, included. You can also do your own if you want to. Now, let me show you an example of the three that we added. We just added these three to the 18 that are there or 24, however, however many there are. I don't, I don't remember anymore. Now, I should give you a quick preview, preview of what those look like. These can be any colors. So we start by adding your company colors, not, not the ones you see here. These are just examples. Your company colors would automatically populate these, but you can change all of them. You can change the text. You can change the colors. The information came from your listing. So I didn't have to type any of this in. It all came as part of the listing. But you can change anything on the page. So if you, could, you could take the price out and say call for price or take out anything you want, and you can add anything in that you want. When you do the campaign, you automatically get, have a dashboard that shows you, this is an example of a dashboard from some fake email I sent out. It shows how many were sent, how many actually got delivered, how many were opened, how many unique opens. The, the difference is unique means I opened it 17 times, I only count as one unique open. And then it also shows you which ones bounced. All of this information um, can be brought back into the CRM. So you could say create a, a group of bounced emails. And when this campaign ends, you click the bounced and say add it to the CRM and they go into your group. Then you have somebody on your team periodically load that group and find out why the email bounced, what's wrong with it, and fix it, and then take them out of the group. So you're constantly updating your email addresses based on 
which guys didn't get your emails, meaning they moved. And you can also see who clicked on which links, how many times they clicked on the link. So if you've got somebody who's clicking one of your links four or five times, that's a good indication that you should call them and see if you can give them any information. If you haven't looked at email campaigns, uh, you should. It's really inexpensive. If you're using something else, uh, price-wise, it's really cheaper, a lot cheaper, and it's hooked to the CRM, so the information can come back to your records without you having to export and then import or however you're doing it now. Um, we're, built, we're starting to build all of this stuff into the one platform so it all works together now. So you don't have to buy seven or eight programs. You can buy one, and they all work together. Okay, Jeff, I'm going to jump off and uh, let the other guys show some pretty cool stuff. Let me see if I can figure out how to – can you take this back, or do I have to give it back to you? Let me see if I can change presenter. Uh, um, Chris, I'm going to make you the presenter. Both you and Mike will be able to actually, – Actually, go ahead and make it Mike. Make it Mike, okay. Oh. Here we go. So everyone see my screen with the uh, marketplace listing? Yep. Yes. Okay, great. So I just want to make sure we're on the same type two screen. So uh, obviously virtual reality is giving a huge advantage to those who are adopting it. A quick tour VR can be experienced through any web enabled device and is a cost effective solution. Uh, for the cost of a couple of renderings, you can provide your clients not only with um, an interactive and immersive experience, but also create an unlimited number of renderings. In this example, we are showing a, a property called uh, Crossings at Heritage, and it's in Marketplace. And when you load uh, in market, market, when you make a Marketplace listing, you can add the URL to the listing. And when the URL is added, it'll activate this 3D icon here. So when I click on that 3D icon, it'll then launch into a new window. <clears throat> Anybody who's viewing your listing then can see the 3D scene, can explore around it, uh, can go to different camera views, and of course go to say the fifth floor floor plan. And so from here we have two unique floor plans that were highlighted by the client. And I can click on them, jump into it, and uh, simply click on anywhere on the floor to walk around. So that'll take me to that location on the floor and then use my right key and I can then look around, as well as there's these hot spots that I could jump to then from anywhere uh, in the room to another spot. So one of the things that's not- so one, of the things, the, one of the things I just wanna point out, Mike, real quick to everybody in case they're not aware of this, is that this is all running in a web browser. So this is important because let's say that you wanna share this scene. You can embed it in any typical web page. You can share it through a link that you just send out in an email. Um, you can create, uh, you know, uh, 2D marketing material that you can print, put a QR code, embed this link into it, and somebody can scan it with their phone and uh, open up the experience. And that's what's really nice about this as well is that because it's in your web browser and if you have a, an internet connection, you can view it on your phone, you can view it on your tablet, you can view it on a laptop or a computer. There is no download. There is no special hardware required. And uh, so long as you have the link and you send it out, no matter how you send it or share it, it's viewable. And that's the beauty of this. It's a 3D interactive virtual environment that, as Mike said, uh, at any point and any time, you can take unlimited snapshots from within the scene and create 2D renders. Then you can see Mike's doing it right there. You can you can take all these snapshots, and uh, you know if you pull up that one uh, the website with the uh, the crossings at Heritage um, embedded in it, Mike, uh, you know go down to any of the uh, the first page or wherever, uh, you're going to see that we have uh, a whole you know number of uh, 2D images embedded from the 3D scene inside this website. So you just go down, yeah, click on uh, click on any one of the units that are there. Uh, click on a two bedroom. Okay, so here we go. And so from within that scene, there were nine renders created. So, you know, take the uh, cost of a typical render that you would get. 
uh, from a service bureau and multiply that by how many you need and the cost really adds up. And what we're offering here and what's great about this is it's interactive, it's embeddable in a website, and you can get as much marketing material as you want from it. You get the most bang for your buck, and it's exciting, it's fun, and uh, you know it's 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 better than what what everybody's been doing up to this point. You'll notice there uh, in, for this particular client, they wanted to show the. Uh, this is actually is a condominium complex. They wanted to be able to show the options of various material packages. And so we're able to show uh, four different packages uh, based upon the client's uh, input of the various materials. And we can also do change of materials on a per material basis. So I can a la carte select the countertops, the cabinets, the flooring, um, things like that uh, based upon the project's needs. So that's a very flexible yes. option. Yeah, so I mean, think about this. The, uh, the traditional method is, you know, you, you either walk into a place and they say, okay, uh, you know, here's some samples we've got. So here's a sample of a countertop. Here's a sample of what the cabinets are going to look like. Here's a sample of what the floor uh, is going to look like. And you're seeing these little tiny squares. You're seeing a, a portion of this. And uh, or maybe they have a picture set up where they've got a rendering of all this stuff together. Uh, and they're saying, imagine uh what it imagine what you would like what you think is going to be the best fit for you um whereas what we're saying is we're saying experience it we're going to put you into the scene we're going to say here's the here's the place that you're uh you know thinking about living in and uh, we want to give you uh, the best visualization to come to a decision uh you know that's going to work for you and uh, and really get you to understand what the implications of that decision you know those decisions are one thing to do, and we're showing a multifamily unit here, but it also applies to offices, industrial, retail, uh, as well as single family, especially new developments uh, for pre-leasing and pre-sales, especially. Uh, in one case, we did a student housing project that uh, the client was able to have 93% of the units uh, leased uh, before construction was completed uh, or before ground uh, before the school year opened, basically. So while construction was going on, we created the virtual property and allowed them to uh, use that as their showroom before they even had a showroom or available units to walk through. Any so if you're working with developers, this is a great way to differentiate yourself and, and bring a unique approach to marketing. Someone buying land for residential development can help them on the, the backside of that, or even if you're leasing just a floor plate to be able to show what a space might look like if it was leased to a, a law firm versus a, a high tech firm. You could create a, a, a prototype for each and, and be able to uh, just drop it in and swap it out with the click of a button like that ABC D in a, an office environment. It's very and, cool. and you know, yeah, and one more point too is, and this is this is going towards the cutting edge of what people are are, are using it for. But if you have a Google Cardboard, uh, you know, um, set of glasses, you can pop your phone right into it. You can start up the Quick Tour, and you will have a full immersive VR experience with the Google Cardboard and your phone. So you know, in your pocket, you've got a little VR device. And so not only can you do it just by, you know, pulling it out and then clicking on the screen, jumping to different points, looking wherever you want, sharing the link, but you can also pop it into the Google Cardboard headset and, uh, you know, turn your head left, turn your head right, and you will look left and right. And it's, uh, it's on par with uh, what we're doing with some of our higher end uh, visualizations. Excellent. Anything else, guys? That's great stuff. And uh, while we're, we're wrapping this up, any any questions, please uh, chime in on the question box. What, what? And we give a we give a weekly demonstration uh, every Thursday at uh, uh, two o'clock Eastern time. Perfect. Yes, yeah, so anyone wanting to learn more about 3D modeling and how it would work for any of your clients, feel free to uh, join in one of those sessions or reach out to Mike or Chris. Um, or your, your the only thing I'd like to I, the only thing I'd like to close off with Jeff real quick is uh, so what some people uh, forget to ask and what they think about afterwards is well what does it take to start something like this 
And for us, uh, the only information that we need, you can, you can sketch it out on a napkin. If that's, if that's all you've got and you've got some dimensions, all we need to know is, you know, how tall the ceilings, where are the windows and uh, some of the surface textures, and we can take it from there and we can provide a quote. So, uh, you know, and like we said, it's, it's, you know, comparable to the cost of a single rendering. You can get a full 3D immersive experience and uh, it doesn't require that much information upfront to start something like this. And that's, that's one of the questions people kind of forget upfront, but figured I'd throw it out there. Excellent. Thanks guys. And, uh, Tim, just jumping back to you for a second. One of the questions was around the quick print. If someone had the uh, a hundred in a list and they were only set to 20 on the view does the quick print get the hundred or does it just get the 20 in the the view uh, it prints whatever's in the view if you want to see a hundred right. records you need to go to the bottom and change it from 10 to show me a hundred and it'll show you a hundred it only shows what it can see in that window though so if you had 600 You'd either have to use export to Excel, which would get all 600, use a report, which would get all 600, or change the bottom to 300 and do two prints. Print the first page, go to the second page, and print the second page. Quick print is really made just for the smaller lists, not, not to take their place of Excel or, or reports. But not enough people ask about, I got really small lists, Tim. They're like, it's 50 things, and I don't want to go through all the hassle of going to Excel and all that. I just want a fast way to print it. That's what this is for. It's just for that situation where you have a small list, 300 records or less, and you want to quickly print them and give it to somebody. And that's what that's for. Perfect. Another question, just uh, since you, you were showing how the tour could be populated into a calendar, uh, how does the sync work for Outlook and Google calendars? Uh, we sync the contacts, we sync the calendar, and any emails you, you send to a client or any emails they send to you automatically get attached to their history. So you have all the emails, but they're all tied to the actual contact that you sent them to or, or that sent you instead of just a giant tub of emails where you got to go searching through every one of them trying to find the, the email from Jeff Finn that he sent two months ago. Go to Jeff Finn's record and hit history, and there's the emails he sent you, not anybody else's. So it makes it really easy to keep things organized, and you don't do anything. It's automatic. The sync's automatic. It just happens periodically in the background. I just want to show how that's set up. You've got the control back. So they just to show where to uh, to go on the Outlook or on the, the real next CRM screen to tee up the sync. Uh, so in the, you have to go to the CRM. That's where this stuff is. Uh, this, the navigation bar is on the side here. Oh, wait, that's just a photograph. That's not going to help me. <laughs> I need a web page. This is a page that um, any, from anywhere in the CRM, it doesn't matter where it is, you can go to my account and you can say sync and you can pick which one you want, Outlook or Google. And then in there you just set it up. What you want to do, uh, what you want to sync. If you want to go one way or two ways, you can export, you can import, not sync at all. You can do it automatically or you can do it manually. So that's how you set it up. It's pretty, it's pretty simple. My account and then under sync, pick the one you want. Perfect. And there's a question, and I, I, know, I don't believe we can do it, but the question is, can you sync just certain types of events? 
out of Outlook and don't know if that's no, it's, it's, it sinks, it sinks all of them. It doesn't just sink a certain one. It just sinks whatever's, whatever's there gets synced in. But what you could do, and I guess this is what he was uh, trying not to overburden his Outlook calendar. You can, you can keep, you can make it a one-way sync. So you have Outlook into CRM, but you don't have to send from CRM back to Outlook. So if you wanted to have Outlook for all of your to-dos and, I mean, you have you CRM for all of your to-dos and Outlook for, for meetings or, or other, you could do it that way. So it might be a workaround, just how you use the two different calendars for different purpose. You can also pick which calendar you send the events to. So you can create a real next calendar and send everything to that so you can turn it on or off if you want to. Uh, and the question, question is on the, is there a priority on the, the two-way sync? I don't know what that means. Um, it says, yeah, I guess Outlook contact or real next contact. I guess they, you can, they you can either export, you can import, or you can sync. If you export, you're sending everything from Realnext to Outlook. If you import, you're sending everything from Outlook to Realnext. If you sync, you're going both ways. And the last one that was changed wins. So if you change a record in Realnext, and then you immediately go to Outlook and change the same record, the one in Outlook's gonna win. If you changed a record in Realnext now, and a half an hour later you changed it in Outlook, it's already synced. So it's already gonna be changed in Outlook and it's gonna come back to Realnext. So the only way you can have a conflict if you on purpose change the same record at the same time in both systems, and then the last one you saved will win. Can't imagine you'd do that though. But that, that, that's what would happen if you change the same record at the same time in both systems. That looks like we've exhausted the questions for today. Once again, we appreciate all of your time and interest and support. Thank you, Mike and Chris, for the great work on the 3D modeling for sharing that and Tim of course for all the great work on the real next suite of solutions and sharing the, the progress you've made we, uh, one other thing Jeff we we sync with on the outlook side we sync with Microsoft 365 we don't sync with the desktop the desktop syncs with Microsoft 365 so you don't need a desktop to sync all, all of this stuff to outlook or to Google we sync directly to the cloud. And if you're just using the desktop, you may not know it, but you're actually using Outlook 365 because they all of that stuff, even if you don't purchase it, you, you, you can't log into it. It's, it's still using that database in the cloud. So basically we sync to anybody who's using any version of Microsoft Outlook. Uh, there was one other question I... Um, Dan was asking about syncing only a tour because he doesn't want to get all of the follow-ups and responses back in there. Um, if you make it an event and you've told us to sync events, it's going to show up in your calendar. If it's history, it doesn't show up. If you record that you followed up with this guy and did a tour or something and make it a history, then that's different and that won't sync. But anything that's in events, will sync right now. There's no way to tell it. I only want these three events to sync and ignore everything else. Sorry, Jeff, just wanted no, to get the last couple answered. That, that's helpful. They were coming in as I was wrapping up. So that's great to uh, get them responded to before we break. We will, once again, as always, uh, post this to our blog, send you recording and uh, allow you to share it with your, your teams and uh, circulate it broader to the, the others that couldn't attend, of course, and look forward to you all joining us next month for the next session. Uh, in the meantime, in two weeks, we have the second uh, in our series of the Real Next user group. So it's a new program we started last month uh, where 
in addition to having Tim and the, the, the company share some of the latest and greatest tools, we, we have a, a spotlight on a user and how they're using the platform to their best advantage and uh, giving you the ability to uh, query uh, uh, with uh, a colleague in the industry and how they're they're taking advantage of real next pose questions to the the group and interact to uh, gain some best practices as well as to share best practices so we're looking for everyone not only to give but to get so we're hoping that uh, you can come in and ask some questions gain some some knowledge and, and share some some feedback in addition to the uh, online session which we'll have uh, i think it's march 12th we'll send out an invite for that we also have a facebook user group so go to our facebook page and, and sign up for that and that'll uh, be the uh, the foundation for a real-time community to be able to pose questions and, and get answers not just from the uh, company but also from other people using the platform in in new and unique ways so uh, look forward to you joining that program and participating and gaining from that as well thanks tim thanks mike and chris thanks everyone for joining we'll see you next time have a great day. Bye-bye.